Convention Highlights of the National Farmers Organization 1977 National Convention held at Omaha, Nebraska. For coverage, here's NFO News Analyst Phil Allen. Orrin Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization, made one of his most eloquent appeals to the people on the land as he addressed the 1977 convention at Omaha, Nebraska. Fact is, he was talking about historic accomplishments of the NFO in building the absolutely necessary facilities for bargaining, the capability of performance on the contracts farm bargaining power can obtain. He was expressing some of the honest exasperation in the minds of NFO members who have devoted years of toil in building the machinery of collective bargaining and their feeling that the NFO story should be better known. He put this challenging question to rural America. I want to ask you a few questions. Have you heard that in the last 14 weeks the volume in the hog department has increased 80 percent? Have you heard that as we come into this convention that we're going to be able to announce the contracts of vital importance, three major packers, one the largest hog killing plant in the nation, strategically located, the biggest hog killer in the nation, and the biggest and oldest established packer of years gone by. Have you heard that we are getting grade A outlets, the prime outlets, right in the heart of the Midwest we're in? that right now we need 42 million pounds more milk per month to fill the contracts that we can get right now? Have you heard that in the last four weeks in the slaughter cattle division that we've increased our volume 70 percent? Have you heard that we are handling almost 10 percent of the nation's sunflowers this year of a little more than a million acres planted? Have you heard that the stocker and feeder division is meeting an equaling record volume? Have you heard that our statistics show now that on the one-year membership agreement that in the age bracket of 24 to 38, that 22.8 percent are joining the NFO on first contact. But have you heard that we have 236 livestock collection points across this nation? Have you heard that we have 47 milk reloads? Have you heard that we have 24 barge loading points, member-owned or throughput agreements with? Have you heard that we have 100 rail loading loadout points with an additional 100 trackside loads, a system and a structure that covers this nation from Maine to California and from Canada almost to the Gulf of Mexico. There has never been a system and a structure like it put together in America. I want to get into the battle and show the farmers can really do it and we can say this is our production. You don't get it if you don't pay our price and our contracts. And I want you to help us do it starting next week. And I don't want you to let up until we've turned this country upside down. And I mean upside down for the farmers of this nation and for their survival and their welfare. We've got the structure. Let's go and let's do it. Let's don't put it off. The United States Secretary of Agriculture, Bob Berglund, was the principal guest speaker at the National Convention of the NFO at Omaha, Nebraska recently. Before he was a member of Congress and before he was the top officer for the nation's farmers, he was a farmer. The Berglund Farm is located in Roseau County, Minnesota, up near the Canadian border. He told the NFO delegates, up there we have nine months of winter and three months of tough sledding. 
And then he recounted a conversation with his father after he knew that President Carter had designated him to head the top agricultural post in America. And so Dad and I were talking. And we agreed we thought it was about time that an NFO member became Secretary of Agriculture. Because just maybe, just maybe, there are things that we can do that lawyers and school teachers cannot do. Here is Bob Berglund's assessment of the agricultural system in the United States as he related it to the NFO delegates at Omaha. Unless we have strong, healthy, viable agriculture that the farmers of this country cannot produce for the consumers. The best thing the consumers of this country have got going and the best thing this hungry world has got going is a strong, healthy agriculture in the United States that needs some tuning. Secretary Berglund relates the government's role as compared to the capability of farmers to solve their own problems. Now is the time to use the tools you have built and through the NFO. There are some who are saying that the government should guarantee 100% of parity. I submit the government's safest course is to provide you with the tools that you can use so that you can achieve the cost of production plus a reasonable profit. Get control. Get control over your own destiny. Get control of your business. That's the way you're going to achieve the kind of incomes that you deserve. I know about your campaign to achieve the contracting of up to 30% of the cr crops and produce in this country. That's the way to go. Believe me, if you get 25% of it, you're going to regulate the price. I can tell you that. Early in the convention, NFO President Orrin Lee Staley outlined a proposal for county and district credit monitoring committees to help all farmers, but especially young farmers, by keeping in touch with their credit difficulties and making sure that Congress and the USDA are aware of the credit crisis facing America's farmers. Here's Secretary Berglund's response. First, he said he cannot, on his own, order a moratorium. I can't cancel debts, I can't cancel interest, but I can give time and terms. And I've told the FHA people, renegotiate these loans, extend, defer, renew, do anything you need to do within the law, but don't foreclose. And I'm delighted that you're planning to organize a credit committee because we need that kind of good, sound farmer judgment in the administration of these programs. And so I'm satisfied that if you and I hang in there, stay hitched, Go home and enlist your neighbors. Get five of them. And they get five more. <laughs> and team up with your friends. We have brought you highlights of the address of Bob Berglund, United States Secretary of Agriculture, as he spoke to the delegates of the National Convention of the NFO at Omaha recently. In keeping with the NFO's long-standing policy about being nonpartisan, the 1977 Omaha Convention invited as guest speakers representatives of both Democratic and Republican parties. The National Farmers Organization doesn't put its emphasis on lobbying or expect that the government can solve the farm problem, but the NFO does make the members' views known and fights for all the legal protection farmers can get until collective bargaining is effective. Now, this position is exactly analogous to another segment of the economy. The federal minimum wage law is long accepted policy, and labor unions have achieved wages considerably above it for organized workers. At the NFO convention, Senator Robert Dole of Kansas, ranking Republican member of the Senate Agriculture Committee, spoke the final day. The day before, two Democrats and the other Republicans spoke. Governor J.J. Exxon of Nebraska and Agriculture Secretary Bob Berglund both Democrats and Republican Congressman Charles Thone of Nebraska. 
Today we're going to hear some highlights from these speeches. Here's an excerpt from the address of Senator Bob Dole of Kansas. But I understand one thing. I understand the impact that NFO has had on legislation. And I mean that in a positive way. And I've come to know... I've come to know and come to respect the dynamic leadership and dedication of your great president. And for that, I'm very much appreciative, Warren Lee. And I hear a lot of talk about farm prices and holding actions and things that may even go beyond. And I look to this group as the pioneers of that movement. You're the pioneers. You called our attention to the fact that we needed higher prices a long, long time ago. And I don't mean to take anything away from any other group, but I just tell you that's a fact. Governor J.J. Exon of Nebraska talked in realistic terms about the relationship of farmers to the government. Now, when we talk about the government staying completely out of agriculture, I do not think that we are being realistic under the conditions that we face today. Yes, if we could ever bring the ideas fostered by the National Farmers Organization from the beginning, collective bargaining, and make it work, then we can get the government out of agriculture. A three-term veteran of the lower house of Congress is Charles Thone of Nebraska. First and foremost, NFO is a bargaining organization. You were in the business a long time ago in this regard. And I agree with you that ultimately farmers must solve their own problems. Uh, I don't think it's going to come on the banks of the Potomac. Uh, generally speaking, uh, back there, you got more problems than solutions for agriculture, as I see it, uh, with embargoes and quotas and the cheap food policies. And I don't care. I, as he indicated, uh, Orrin Lee, I'm a Republican. Doesn't make much difference. As I see it back there, uh, who's in charge uh, seems to be that a cheap food policy perme permeates the whole place there, and the State Department ultimately calls the shots. And, I don't think that'll ever work uh, for a fair... <laughs> <laughs> so it boils down to this, that farmers uh, must work together, and I think they must join together and demand uh, their fair economic share, uh, or we're not going to get long-range solutions at all. Today you heard from three people in government who were guest speakers at the NFO National Convention at Omaha, Nebraska. Robert Dole ranking Republican member of the Senate Agriculture Committee, Governor J.J. Exon of Nebraska, and Nebraska Congressman Charles Thone. One of the most interesting feature attractions of the 1977 NFO convention is a hog grading demonstration. The convention is being held in the Omaha Civic Auditorium, which is right in the heart of downtown Omaha, Nebraska, a city of 350,000. So to see live hogs in the center of a city anymore, no matter what city, is an interesting sight. I have right beside me, Alan Scraw, who is head of the NFO Hog Division. Why is this demonstration being held at this convention, Alan? Phil, with the specialization that is taking place in the packing industry, it is essential that we put hogs in their proper grade on the basis of weight and quality. To use an example, if you were a, a farmer and you ordered 10-10-10 fertilizer and ended up with 3-12-12, you couldn't get the job done. If a packer is selling number two loins, uh, we couldn't get the job done if we sell them number three hogs. So we want to match our production to the packers' requirements. Thereby, we're in a position to negotiate better contracts, higher premiums, and develop a total program for NFO producers. You have some very professional hog graders here, haven't you? Now, can you tell me something about them and uh, what they're going to be doing when they grade these hogs? They're going to be categorizing these hogs on USDA 1, 2s, and 3s, and out hogs. We've tied this with a film to give you a total picture of exactly what various plants require as far as raw product is concerned. The end product of this activity here and the activity taking place in the collection points will be a hog contract for NFO members only, uh, which should lead us to a cost of production clause written into that contract. Alan, there are a number of uh, very distinguished industry representatives here at this convention, aren't there? Could you mention uh, the names of some of those? 
Well, we have uh, Dr. Haverkamp, the vice president in charge of economic development for Wilson Foods, the world's largest major. We have the executive vice president in charge of the uh, pork sausage division of Frederick Harrod in Detroit. The man is Alan Sharluski. Uh, and we have the executive vice president in charge of the Frederick Fresh Pork Division, uh, Joel Dorfman. I'm talking now to one of the professional graders who will be going through this demonstration. Uh, first, what is your name, sir? Uh, Roscoe Hild, H-I-L-D. Now, they told me just a moment ago that you have long experience in grading hogs. Mm -hmm. yeah, about Tell 30, about that. 32 years, I was with John Morrell and Company and Wilson and Company out of Cedar Rapids. And I worked as a hog buyer uh, for about 32 years. Then I joined the National Farmers Organization in July of this year. And I'm now doing grading for the NFO and the collection points in south, south central Iowa, mostly. I'd like to ask you, what is it that you look for? when you grade hogs? Well, the first thing you look for, uh, of course, is the size of the hog, whether he will fall in the right weight bracket uh, from 200 to 230 or 40, uh, which most packers uh, buy at that weight. And then we look for the confirmation, whether you have uh, an overly fat hog, whether you have the nice ham, uh, the straight belly part, and uh, that is your grading. Now, if he's overly fat, we discount hogs. If he has uh, uh, a nice set of hams, a narrow back, uh, we figure that, they, that he has the, the right five primal cuts, which the packer markets. And um, that's what we look for in, in the grading end of it. Uh, now, like I say, if he is overly fat, we will take off. Or if he is uh, a nice type of a hog, we will add on in price. And we figure that the uh, farmer uh, needs to be paid for a real nice hog. That's, that's his desire, is to produce a meat-type hog. We feel by the grading system, we can give him a little more money, an incentive uh, to crossbreed these hogs to strive for a meat-type hog. This demonstration of hog grading is coming to you from the Omaha Civic Auditorium in downtown Omaha, right in the heart of a city of 350,000 people. These hogs were brought here for, as part of the 1977 NFO convention. The NFO has been describing why good grading is part of the supplying of good contracts for farmers. Phil Allen for NFO News. And that for today is something to think about. This has been coverage of the convention highlights of the National Farmers Organization 1977 National Convention. Now is the time for collective bargaining for agriculture. <laughs>